but we're going in the water right now. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has to, like I'm in danger. <laughs> That's the biggest problem in our life right now, really. Uh, this is not right. This doesn't feel like real life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Are we quickly sinking to our deaths? Not quickly. We are Brett and Jade Evans. We poured every ounce of ourselves into refitting this salvage sailboat. The gutting and grinding and glassing were all to get us here. It's time to put this beast back in the water where it belongs. Everything is ready except for the boat. We have 48 hours. Last night, Dave came by like after hours, picked us up in the slings, blasted off the bottom of the keel. He's leaving us in the slings over the weekend to kind of give us a kick in the pants to get everything else done so we can get back in the water. This is just a very unique form of blackmail. Thanks Dave for the motivation. <laughs> we got this. We got it. We'll launch Monday. Maybe Tuesday. Maybe Tuesday. <laughs> also, okay, we just got done putting that on because even with the blasting last night, it's rusty. It's almost impossible to have no rust whatsoever. So we put some that on there, it'll convert it, and then tomorrow we can barrier coat it, paint it. Supposedly it's really good stuff. We'll see how it works. It already changes, so at least that was black. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna be a never ending process. It's a cast iron keel. It's always gonna be a little bit rusty. So all you can do is mitigate it. <laughs> Will it work? Yeah, I also crushed the pants. You broke it in half. I went and I painted the squares again because they needed another coat, but it started raining that. Last time, finish those up, and oh my gosh, my hand's so shaky, I'm gonna drop this on my face. <laughs> I painted the squares, that's what I was saying when I was on the ground, laying there. They look lovely now. Maybe another coat and a couple of them, but yeah, pretty much ready to go. What are you doing, Brett? Dribbling. No, we're cleaning out the speed, uh, the, yeah. You don't sound like you're acting like me. I don't know what I'm doing. Will you tell me what to do? Ow. I mean, ah! <laughs> oh, how'd you mean to run it? I should have feel like I'm a danger. You better run. It's coming off. Yeah, that's what I would do. You <laughs> should wear eye protection. I should wear eye protection. Brett is just heat gutting the bottom of it because it collected quite a bit of moisture when we created our little greenhouse, but it also warmed it up quite a bit, which is good. I mixed up some of the epoxy barrier coat and we are gonna get that on it and we are gonna hurry because we gotta do a lot of layers today. We taped up our prop and we are just getting ready to zinc coat it. Now this is a tip we actually originally heard from Sailing Auto Set from the Neelys, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for the tip. Brett, want to explain it to everybody? Basically just a zinc paint and it's way cheaper than like zinc paint that you buy for zinc paint pop stuff. It's like, <laughs> it's it, it, was, it was like $8 <laughs> instead of like $80, so. <laughs> Can you explain it a little better than that? I don't think so, I think that's about it. It's just a rustoleum. Yeah. Definitely not doing as good of a job <laughs> as they did on theirs. They did it properly and like Ooh. sailing out of set. Did they? Yeah, they like, you know, took it apart and did each piece. We're kind of doing this more as a last minute, let's just get it done and spraying it in a minute. We'll uh, maybe turn it and spray it again. But basically the idea is to just coat it with as much as possible so that it hopefully helps. We considered taking it all off and apart, so then we were worried we'd never get it back together and it works right now. So that's not fixed. 
things that aren't broken. What's the saying? Don't fix it. Broke, don't fix it. That one. So we, we're not fixing it. We're just zinking it with the spray. We'll report back next haul out, I guess. See how it does. See if it was a really, a really good yeah. boat life hack or a really poor one. <laughs> All done. <laughs> it really reminds me of when people take that like grippy paint and paint their whole truck or jeep with it. The bed liner paint. Oh yeah. It's kind of like that matte. Let's go and adventure feel. Do I think? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. We have a slight problem. It's too cold. That's our problem. That's the biggest problem in our life right now, really. So all things considered, can't complain too much. But when it comes to drying epoxy bottom paint, being too cold is a huge problem and it is not curing. I spent some time taking the heat gun to it, trying to just get it to cure faster and it's just not happening. We are running out of light and we are running out of day and we are running out of time. So we are running to the hardware store to get, what are they called? What's the proper name? Flame throwers. Blowtorch. Blowtorch. Flamethrowers is way... <laughs> I mean, many, basically. Mini flamethrowers. We're gonna go get a blowtorch or two. I'm not wearing these suits out. <laughs> what does the world come to? Hopefully we can get it to cure enough that we can get that anti-fouling on tonight. We, I mean, the sun's setting. <laughs> it's not in the world yet. Okay, trip 12 to the hardware store. We are out of bottom paint. We thought we had more than we had and we were wrong. So let's go. <laughs> Cause they close really soon and we gotta hurry and get there and hope they have it. Got it. Today is lunch day. Today is the biggest days of our whole lives of this whole project. <laughs> and so of course everything goes wrong this morning. Where we're staying right now has a kind of a small parking garage. So they have a lift system where half the cars get lifted. That way they can fit double the cars in the space. Except our car was up top, so like here and the lift was broken this morning. So we end up having to get a taxi to come over here. We just got here and they're gonna be here any second with the lift. We have a lot to do. The first thing was to let the dogs use the restroom because that would have been cruel. Now we need to go get the boat ready. We're already in the slings and as soon as they come, there's nothing, it's just gonna go really fast. So we need to, let's go. We can't find <laughs> the key of the engine, but I just found my last Bluetooth headphones. Let's get them. They're so beautiful. I'm thrilled about that, but I don't know where the engine key is though. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. 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 And we never found the engine key, so I don't even know what the plan is, but we're going in the water right now. Ah! Well, the keel's in the water. In the water, we're floating. You can check for leaks real quick. Are we quickly sinking to our deaths? 
that quickly. <laughs> Is there any water? Okay, I checked all the through holes. We're not seeing, we're not taking any water. Look, it's totally dry, all our through holes. One or two. Good job, babe. We did it! <laughs> Look what we got! That's a cuckoo! Can you do it? Yeah, good boy! Good boy! We're dock dwellers, baby. We're dock dwellers. I feel like we need to go check it. If I checked it, it's like perfectly, everything's perfect. There's so. no way it's leaking. No, there's no way. <laughs> Good boy, Tinker boy. Oh, Good boy. <laughs> Look at his walk. Good job. Even on the like little floating dock a little bit, he's getting to see legs. You can see he was all crouched. Right. Like, he'll get back. Yeah. Like, he seems to acclimate. Dingo has always loved to sail. Though his body language and atrophied sea legs are hard evidence that we have spent too long on land. He's kind of wobbly, huh? It's a little wobbly. It's a little wobbly. Once we were convinced that our boat wasn't going to spontaneously sink in its slip, we spent the rest of the morning with our adventure dogs, reacclimating to life off the hard. It was time to remember how to be a sailing family, and it didn't take too long. Tell us how you feel. Oh, we've got a couple dock dogs. We're dock dwellers. We're docked. We're on the docks. I feel. Does it challenge you how many times you use dock in I, one sentence? I know. I, I <laughs> can't think of any other. Any other? Help me out here, guys. It's super exciting. I can't, like, part of me, I think I'm, like, disassociating. This doesn't feel like real life. It feels like a dream. I just, I, it hasn't sunk in yet, I don't think. Hopefully, it doesn't sink at all. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you find something to eat? Drop it. Good girl. Good girl, what is it? A piece of plastic. Delicious. She dropped it though. Yes, she did. Dingo. Hey, good boy. You're getting good. Good boy. Can you use that zero cares? No, yeah, she, I don't think she's noticed. She was born with you. How are you feeling? I feel so good. <laughs> like it will, I mean, think about it. The last time this was in the water, it was leaking. A like lot, there, yeah. There was, we could watch water coming in, and now we can't. So at least we plugged a hole. <laughs> the, nothing else. At the very least. <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am ecstatic. <sighs> <sighs> I can see your breath. <sighs> <laughs> Dingus. Do you like being a boat dog? You can get used to it. Come here, honey. I know all about it. <laughs> Big whoop, it's a floating boat. <laughs> we finally got it, huh? We're in. Went well. Yeah. All because of you. Oh, yeah, right. Kicking yeah, and we screaming. Oh, we appreciate it. Big time. Yeah, I bring my dogs to the dog park over here. We Ubered back here so that we could get our car, and we're just warming up really quick. We are not. We're not a very cold weather family. We're very much a tropical family. So we're gonna, we're gonna warm up <laughs> before heading back to the boat. <laughs> we have been reunited with our car. One of our patients reached out to us and offered up his air filtration system. We're gonna go pick that up and then also probably see his business a little bit. He owns a flight school, I think the flight school at the airport. That's only like five minutes from the yard, which is pretty cool. I think he probably recognized the yard from the air. We were standing out in the yard and he did like a flyby and gave us a little wing tip. <laughs> and it was just a wing dip. Yeah. Apparently I'm using the wrong words. He waved at us with his airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate actually. <laughs> anyway, it was really fun. So I'm excited to go and see See the place, see the planes. Just gonna be fun. Come and take a ride with me. Up so I to go to faster. Join me for a cup of tea. When 
So that's why I said, you get your, you get your choice on what you go flying Okay. <laughs> They had a 141 program. Got it. That they partnered up with ATP. Cool. Right. Thanks, Dan. Yeah. It was really nice to meet you. See ya. Have a great day. Yeah, we're definitely, I don't know what you want to tell We'll just come take oh, a tour. Awesome. Check it out. That yeah. terrific. Yeah. All right. See ya. You <laughs> look so cool. That was so awesome. <laughs> Somebody's got to carry the camera. You always do the hard jobs. Look at that beauty. Where's the Velcro? Velcro should go down. Thanks, Velcro. Okay. 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 <laughs> Saving the day. We did it. You good? Is that right? Oh no, we have him backwards. Yep. I'll trade you. Straight up. I'll trade you straight up. Lover. <laughs> I've seen those this before it starts raining. You want to see the cool planes? I didn't want to see the cool planes. Totally worth it. One awesome thing about being in the water is that we can clean off the boat. One less than awesome thing about being in the water at this time of year is that the water is actually shut off for like hoses. So we decided to go ahead and take advantage of this wet afternoon and clean our boat. I'm already regretting this decision, but let's do it. <laughs> I have just collected Fred's rain jacket from the car. So a significant amount of water. You ready? I got it wet for you in advance. Pretty uh, pre wetted. Pretty wetted. Thank you. You're welcome. You fill my head with roses. Washing off all the literal dirt from our month's park at the entrance of an unpaved parking lot was its own sort of reward. All right, well, it stopped raining basically two seconds right after we started sweeping. So, a very little amount of cleaning to match the little amount of wet, but I want to show you guys a new friend. Ah! <laughs> that just happened. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> this is bad. Salt water submerging is not ideal. Also, I'll just use my scarf. Let's get it dry. All right. Sorry, honey. It's okay. I'm hoping you don't break the camera. You want it in your movie? I did want it in your camera, but this one's still good. I don't want to get rid of this one. I mean, it's all weather sealed except for that we had the battery back on. Sure. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is weather sealed at all. Is there a gasket on the bottom of the battery? Nope. I think it's done. This camera and I have been through a lot together over the years, and even though it was hard and emotional to see it go, it seemed a fitting end. In literature and art, rain often symbolizes a rebirth, the cleansing moment that starts a new beginning. This is the last clip that our camera filmed. Us, in the rain, on launch day, washing away the old. End of chapter. Brett is off on an adventure. Do you want to tell everyone about it, Brett? Yeah, we're headed to the airport right now. Going to meet up with one of our patrons who's going to take me flying in his L39. This should be awesome. <laughs> Are you so excited? I'm so stoked. <laughs> this is going to be a riot. I think, so here's what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to go, we're going to have a brief. 
we're going to talk about what the flight's going to be, talk about kind of what the plan is, kind of some emergency situations, stuff like that. And we'll probably go do like a, probably a walk around, maybe a pre-flight, probably take off and go to fly. He'll probably give me some controls at some point, or maybe he'll, I'm not sure if it's going to be a little more of a flight lesson or if it's just going to be a lot of fun probably just a lot of fun. I'm not going into this with the mindset that I'm a student. I'm going into this as a mindset of I'm just there to have fun. So if I never touch the controls, that'll be fine. And I think we'll end up doing rolls, some loops, some all sorts of good stuff and probably see how sick I get. If I don't puke, then we'll probably take it up a notch and have a little more fun. I've never, I've never done any sort of aerobatics. I've never done any fun flying really other than like spin training. So I'm a little nervous <laughs> to see how my body reacts, but uh, should be good. I think I'll be just fine. So, I'm excited. So you've heard of Pitt Specials, yeah. This was Curtis Pitt's last song before he passed away. We are thrilled that Surfshark VPN is sponsoring this week's episode because it is a product that we use every day. Basically, they're the best. I travel for work and soon, hopefully, we'll be traveling by our boat too, and that means we'll be using a lot of Wi-Fi. A VPN is a virtual private network which encrypts all of your information when you're online. This is especially important when you're using that free public Wi-Fi at the coffee shop or the library or wherever. And I ran some speed tests when I was looking to make the switch and Surfshark was actually the fastest of all of them, has 3200 servers in 65 countries and can be used simultaneously on an unlimited number of devices with one account. I feel like I should be in World War II. So if you aren't in the market for a VPN, I hope it's because you already have one and are using one. If you don't use a VPN, I highly recommend you check out Surfshark. You should get in there, Jade. Because they're sponsoring the video, they're offering anyone who uses our link below or uses the code EVANS a huge discount of 83% off and three free months, which is just crazy. And if that wasn't enough incentive, know that by clicking the link below using our code of any of our sponsors, especially signing up for them, directly helps keep our channel alive. So. Go be safer online, check them out, and thanks again to Surfshark. Brett, would you grab that black cushion on top? Just go ahead and stand up on the, everything up there. There you go. Well, I was, actually, I was gonna say everything right there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now, put your left foot on that. Left foot. Left, the other left. Right. <laughs> left. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so what is this? This is a 1978 Great Lakes. How you feel? I'm so stoked. This is gonna be so fun. I'm all stressed, all of this. Are you? This is how we go past the plane with the parachute if we need to. Well, I mean, it's better to know it and not need it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of scary, though. Yeah, no, I, I don't like that if you needed to wear a helmet. It just holds my headset on, that's all. The airplane Zeke is taking me up in today is the Aero Vodakoti L39. He said I got my choice and this is the one I picked. L39s are a high performance jet trainer designed in Czechoslovakia, where they were produced from the 1970s to the mid 1990s. They're still used today throughout the world as trainers, but many of them, like this one, have been retired and have now found their way into the hands of very lucky civilians. We aren't planning to do anything crazy on this flight, so I'm not entirely sure why he had me wear a flight suit. My guess is to protect my clothes just in case I lose my breakfast all over the cockpit, which I am very happy to report I didn't. Zeke took me through a very entertaining and thorough pre-flight, nod to the checks, before helping me get strapped in for the ride of a lifetime. Are you so stoked? You look cute. <laughs> I mean, rad. Awesome. Let's see it. <laughs> Temperature 4, 2.95. Altimeter 2, 9er, 9er, 9er. November 139 Delta Zulu Experimental L39. We're going to be VFR Newport practice area 14,500 with whiskey. Maintain VFR out of below 4,000 till it's eyes. Departure frequency 123.67. The controls are pretty good to you here. Oh, they're outstanding. Yeah. All right, now opposite rudder. Max power. Hold the brakes, max power. Yep. All right, power stable. Three and one's good, no lights. Brake release. Now you got some rudder, don't you? Yep. 
All right, hold it. We're at 70 knots. At 95, we're going to initiate back pressure. I'll call your airspeed. And there's 95. A little bit of back pressure. Okay, the engine hasn't blown up. Three and one's good. We don't have any lights. There's 180. Start to turn to 160. All right, I'm going to set climb power here. One three nine zero two. Contact departure. Good luck. Switching departure. Jump to see ya. Not so bad, huh? Oh, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. A lot lighter on the controls than I expected. All right, since engine start, we burn 35 gallons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my aircraft? Here I go. Oh, that's... Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it can move. Oh yeah. And I'm only about half deflection right there. All right, so I'm gonna set be about two G pole until we get about 15 degrees nose up, and then I'm gonna unload and do a quick aileron roll, okay? All right. So, so 40, there we go, there's 15. Uh, How you doing? Oh, that was phenomenal. I'm sorry, about three Gs on the entry, there's three. We find the horizon. All right. We let go. Now, would you like to try an aileron roll for yourself? I would. I'd love to. Push now. Traffic. <laughs> Got traffic. And that was freaking awesome. Traffic not available. Yeah, traffic's not available. Good. Perfect. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> Just pass out of your code. Straight up this bay and then on the right? Yep, yep. And then there's a private so airstrip right here. That, uh, and Not a view I think you expected to get today. And now, that is so cool. And Delta is entering the downwind for the uh, overhead, sir. 139 Delta Zulu, roger. Right break, runway 23. Okay, right break 23, Delta Brings up there for sure. <laughs> the only time I, I felt my stomach was always actually on that break. It was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Did you love it? Yeah. We, we, we need one. <laughs> we need one. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can swing by and get one on the way home. Okay. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was just, what, what threw me off was how easy it was. Like, it was just like, and then like. <laughs> <laughs> and recovering out of them, you, you never felt out of control. No, no, the, it was so easy. It was, it was just like the plane, the plane didn't care which way it was pointed. It just went that way. So like, if you flew <laughs> like this, it just flew like that. And so like, <laughs> so you would just put it where you wanted it and just went. That's awesome. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad you had so much fun. Me too. Thank you all so much for watching, especially if you've been with us since the very beginning. We'll see you next week as we try to remember how to put this 50 foot jigsaw puzzle back together again. What were we thinking? Yeah, because you would never say you're going to beat me, because Brett would never beat you. <laughs> Man, I'm getting... You're oh. terrible at this. <laughs> what would I say? Oh, can you flip it? No, we should do this. The whoopers. The whoopers, you're right. <laughs> That's exactly what you would say. <laughs>